So it's great to have you all in this room. And uh, it's definitely a, a important day uh, for all of us to reflect on our achievements, to reflect on the opportunities ahead of us, and to also reflect the challenges we had to go through. So I would like to wish each one of you a happy International Women's Day. And I would like to talk about, I think the topic was very clear, that I had to talk about myself. And that was uh, about me, my opportunities and challenges, the road I took, and how I reached here. I can tell you one thing, that uh, challenges were many uh, in my life, but uh, one has to be bold enough to overcome that challenge. Uh, I had faced challenges starting from the time I left uh, primary school. I was born in an era where women were not supposed to be studying any further, and women were not supposed to be working. So if a woman were working, then obviously they can't get married because the families were looking for brides who stayed home. So in my situation, it was very interesting because my father was the one who was pushing me and saying that, no, you have to go to school, you have to graduate. Whereas my grandfather had this old style of thinking and he said, no, 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 you're not going to any school. So that was the first obstacle in my life. And, and of course, the battle was between the father, my father, and his father. So I was out of that. So ultimately, my father won. And uh, it was a very proud moment when we had the seamstress coming home to stitch my uniform. Basically, everyone sat around to watch how the dresses were being done for me. So it was really, I could see that pride on everyone's face. But to me, it was a sense of responsibility. It started there and then. That, you know, after all this struggle, I have to do well. I have to do something better with my life. And I felt being the eldest in the family, I have to be the role model for my other siblings. And we were seven in the family. So that's where my journey began. And uh, not recognizing really that I had the leadership qualities. Because as women, we always doubt ourselves. Uh, we feel that we are not ready yet to take up responsibility. And the first feeling of that nature came when I was in uh, secondary school. And uh, I was asked to come to the library along with other students. And when we reached the library, suddenly the vice principal came and he started putting badges on the table and said, don't turn it around, just leave it there. And I knew it was to do with the prefects. So then he said, turn it around. First thing I saw, it was head girl. Again, doubt. So I got up, went to him, and I said to him, I think you made a mistake. He said, just go and take your seat. That's all he said. So I took a sigh of relief and I said, oh my God, really, this is a big job I have to do. What am I expected to do? This is the first question that came. But I took that as a challenge. And after that, when I went to university, same story, I got selected in the student council. And again, I wondered, why? Why me? But you know, as a person, you never see your leadership qualities. You know, if you see it earlier, then you can thrive for those jobs and you know, try to reach there. So from there, the story started when I came back after my uh, studies, uh, started looking for jobs, and ultimately I found a job uh, as a school teacher. Struggles began even as a school teacher. Uh, although I was teaching from seven, uh, from the time I graduated, but unfortunately, uh, in those days, again, there was a tripartite forum uh, where the union, uh, the, the government, and the institution that you work for come together to decide uh, the, the promotions. And I missed out. And unfortunately, the lady who was sent to be the head of department happened to be the lady whom I was helping to prepare for her lessons in Navua. That was the strange thing. And that's when I decided that I cannot longer be in this institution and I need to get out. Otherwise, I would have been very happy being where I was, 
because we knock off at three o'clock. I can do exercise, go home, cook food, look after my children. It was a very comfortable kind of a career. But when I left that job, I went to teacher training. Teacher training, again, another obstacle when it came to promotion. The promotion was given to another junior staff and I missed out. So that's when I decided to hell with everyone. I'm going to do what I have to do. And that is I started applying outside teaching uh, profession. And the first job I applied, which was in the environment department as a civil servant, I got selected. And that's when my career started. And uh, as an as a environmentalist, I had the opportunity to go and study, do my master's degree, which I did in trade and environment, and that was in Netherlands. Unfortunately, after my studies, when I came back, I was shown the same table, same chair, same pay, same work. So I got up again, went to my permanent secretary, challenged him. I said, I have to serve two years bond. If you, don't make thing any, if you don't make things better for me, after two years, I'm moving out. And I was true to my words. So they couldn't do anything better for me. So uh, in a crazy way, I, I applied for the CEO of Lemmy Town Council. And I got that job, very excited. I came back to the office, had a chat with my permanent secretary. And he said to me, are you mad? I thought to myself, come on, I've got a job. He said, that's one of the jobs where you'll be asked to stay at night, you know. Uh, all the meeting, council meetings will be at night and you have a young family. Will you be able to deal with it? Uh, it's an end of the career type of job after uh, town clerk, what else? And I realized, yeah, he's right. So I went back to the office and I wrote a letter saying that I'm not accepting this job. Then the second job that came uh, through was uh, manager uh, trade uh, and investment uh, bureau. I, I became a manager there as a trade facilitator. And that job was interesting, a lot of challenges again, because uh, in that job um, uh, I it didn't go along with my ethics, uh, to be very frank. I could not roll out r red carpet for investors who I felt were not the right ones. And within 14 months, uh, I decided to leave that organization. But something I want to share with all of you, when I started at uh, Investment uh, Fiji, the very first week I was given the challenge of uh, um, preparing the annual report of the previous year. Now someone else new to the organization would have said, no way, why should I? I wasn't here, I don't know anything about it. I took that challenge. Why? I took that challenge because I wanted to know more about that organization. And I thought, this is the best way I can know exactly what happened last year and I can better myself as I go along with the management team. So that was the reason why I took that. Another example that I want to share is when I was with the environment department. Uh, with the environment department, uh, there was a negotiation going on and uh, this was the negotiation happening um, in um, overseas and uh, it was to do with bio biosecurity and um, I'm, I was very passionate about biosecurity so I put my hand up and I said you know I would like to lead that project unfortunately I was not given a opportunity and it was given to someone else now that someone happened to be a male who did not do anything, and when it came to writing a cabinet paper, I was approached by the permanent secretary that, why don't you write the cabinet paper? Can you believe it? Something that I was not involved in, but I'm asked to prepare a cabinet paper. Again, I took that challenge, and I did it. Because in every job, I looked for the opportunities, I was hunger for information, and I was ready to learn. And that just took me from one step to another. And that gave me a lot more confidence to speak out, to put my hand up and say, yes, I can do it. But uh, uh, when I joined Consumer Council, my life's philosophy was that you work for four years and move on. And that's precisely what I did when I joined Consumer Council. And uh, when I joined that institution, I'll be true to you, I had no idea what that organization does. 
So it was again self-learning on the job, which I did. And after four years, I felt that I have done enough for this organization and I should move out. So I did apply for an international job, where I did get an international job as a director. But the problem was the public, who felt that there was still unfinished business and I should continue with it. Although that job was paying me a lot more than the current salary that I was receiving, so I had to give a quick call to my husband and say, do we need more money? Is it okay if I stay back? And he said, yep, I can look after you. And that was the assurance I got. So that's where I stayed almost for 12 years. And one of the most challenging job, uh, I learned a lot. I was, um, I, would, I would say I was very passionate in terms of what I was doing, totally motivated to bring about that change. And I went with it. But after, while I was uh, with Consumer Council, there were opportunities for me to join politics. And politics was not something that I really wanted to join. I never ever thought that I'll be where I am today. That didn't cross my mind and I didn't want to join politics. But it was simply when I, I had a conversation with a male colleague of mine. Actually, he approached me and he said to me that, you know, you've been fighting for all these uh, issues, consumer issues from outside and you're pushing for reform, it's taking too long to get those changes. But if you go there, you can bring about that change. And that made me think. And I said, yep, yeah, he's talking sense here. And that led to the decision that I should stand for politics. Again, it was not an easy decision, very difficult decision. And uh, I can again share the importance of having networks uh, unfortunately for women, we don't have that support team that we need to have to bounce our ideas, uh, to, to, to get an understanding or feeling that you're on the right track. And uh, I did share in the last forum that uh, when we were campaigning, I could see that uh, male candidates had like three cars full of men following them because he just had to go there and sell himself and, and move out. But for me, I was alone. And uh, I was struggling uh, to see which community I could network with. And it was very difficult. And what was most amazing for me was that actually unknown people that I've never met, but they met me during rallies and other places, they were my network team. They volunteered and said, I can help you. And I used to always ask them how. Some said we can help you financially. I said I don't need money. I've got enough money. So they said, how can we help you then? I said, well, I need votes. How are you going to get the votes for me? So these were my struggle as a woman candidate. And people tend to uh, forget that uh, for women, it's a double struggle to get where we have to be. And unless and until we have the women's support, I don't mean the women have to vote for women. What I mean is at least bounce off the idea, that kind of, you know, just getting a call where you can have a chat with them and say, you know, this is how my day went, right? Voting is your personal choice. But just to get that shoulder where you can lean on, I didn't have that. And I would encourage women, never mind whom you vote, it doesn't matter but at least pick up the phone and call that person. It means a lot. Yes, I receive a lot many uh, calls after the result. And to me personally, sorry to say this, but I'm a very frank person, it was meaningless. If those calls came prior, would have meant a lot to me. Right, so this is the story I wanted to share with you. And I think I better end here because we've got a panel discussion after this. So thank you very much for listening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, once again, I want to say happy uh, International Women's Day. Please uh, make sure you work on your inner abilities. That is build your confidence, put your hand up, and be motivated in whatever you do. Don't sit back and say that, you know, I'm not able to progress in life because of the men who are your bosses. You have to work 
hard. With your confidence, I think the weaker part is that self-doubt. We keep self-imposing that we are not ready yet. We can't do this. We can't do that. And that's why I shared my story. And this is purely my story. I just want to make this very clear because I know that there is uh, some problems going on based on the statement I made during uh, Fiji Institute of Accountants uh, Forum. And it's unfortunate that the NGO women have got it all wrong because they were not in that room to hear the whole story. We were simply talking about our abilities and the topic was women in leadership. We're not talking about gender violence. We're not talking about any other aspect of women just women in leadership. And that's something that I have to deal with. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Minister Kumar. That was certainly inspiring. Uh, may I please request...